Hello folks and welcome to Four Season Backpacking. Please subscribe for the latest outdoor adventure videos. <laughs> Hello there. For you, uh, those of you new to the channel, I am Richard. I am your host for Four Season Backpacking. On today's episode, we're walking from uh, Khan uh, to Share Hill. So basically, basically on this uh, channel, um, I go world camping around Britain mostly but um, when I get the chance um, every so often I do some world camping abroad so I'd really appreciate it if um, if you like that kind of thing um, I'd appreciate it if you subscribe to my channel I have uh, 30 plus years of experience of um, travel around the world around Britain hitchhiking, hiking and uh, wild camping. So folks, without further ado, let's get on to today's episode. First follows a montage. <laughs> There's a shopping trolley in the, uh, the river in uh, Khan. Not really had a look properly at the um, town centre here in Khan. And of course there's a great big co-op here. One of the churches here in uh, Khan. Pretty impressive church actually. Wow, check that out. <coughs> it's like a mini cathedral. Got a whole load of poppies there, I guess from uh, for the First or Second World War. Right folks, this is my uh, sleeping system for winter. 
Um, I have a Rab Ascent 900, which is very warm. Apparently it's warm enough for uh, Norway in winter. I'm not sure if that is true or not, but it is very warm. And I have a mountain equipment ultra lightweight uh, bivy bag to keep the um, the sleeping bag dry. Um, even though I have got uh, my um, Van Gogh Helium F10 tent. And this is um, going inside my down sleeping bag, which is a Rab Silk Mummy um, liner. This helps the sleeping bag stay clean. It also helps the um, bag keep it that little bit warmer, as does the um, bivy on the outside as well as keeping it dry, or hopefully keeps it dry. Um, and for a mat, I have a Thermal Rest Ridge Rest. My tent is looking a bit of a state now, but I put, being that I'm in a sort of maybe a popular, fairly popular area in the day, just in case I'm putting my backpack in here, but normally, if I'm in a remote area, I'll just leave it outside in its rain jacket. Um, so this is the bottom of my sleeping system. It's all sorted out now. So you've got the Silk Mummy Rab liner in there. You've got the Rab Ascent 900. And you've got the Mountain Equipment Ultra Lightweight um, Bivy there. And here I will put all my clothes in a pile to make a cushion. I do normally bring a ski mask in winter, but I've gone and forgot it, but luckily I've got a hat and this, but even if I forgot that, I've got my um, sleeping bag hood, I can use that, but I tend to um, find that I move about a lot in the night and it never stays on my head, but obviously an emergency if I have to, I'll have to make sure it stays on my head, but um, yeah, I've got my hat anyway and a hooded sort of top. Uh, as you would have seen, I've done a lot of um, drone footage today and I've got the Maverick Air and I've used up a lot of battery power. Um, so I've got this Omi 20, um, you can plug in the mains plug to it and I'm charging up the um, drone battery with it, uh, one of the drone batteries, the Maverick Air. Unfortunately Maverick Air doesn't charge by USB so have to do that so yes that's some omi 20 battery pack i'll put a link in the description for it as with the um sleeping system i got on the mat and everything i'll put all the links in the description for that and for the control the remote um drone control i'm using a cheap power pack to charge that up it was quite a big power pack it's a really good value one it takes a long time to charge um recharge the power pack though um but um the control can be charged up by USB, so yeah, for that I'm using the cheap power pack and I'll put a link in the description for this power pack because I highly recommend it. It's very good value for money, really well built. Um, yeah, guys, <laughs> I've actually got my um, ski mask. <laughs> Luckily, I must have dropped it out of my bag when I was pulling my stuff out, but yeah, there it is, so I'll be wearing that tonight. I doubt it very much, the sleeping bag that I'm going to feel like cold, but if I did, I can use these uh, hand and toe warmers, which obviously these would normally go in the bottom of your shoes when it's cold, um, which I have used in my shoes because sometimes like, um, yeah, in winter, you, your circulation in your toes, especially in boots, because you can't move your toes about much, um, uh, do tend to suffer from the cold and then we've got hand warmers obviously good again for putting in gloves but I can put them in the sleeping bag if it gets that cold but I doubt it will but I did forget my thermal bottoms unfortunately but even with this I, you know, I, I don't even need those with this sleeping bag to be honest I think it's going to be minus 6 tonight so guys I'm uh, settled in now in my sleeping bag had some snacks I bought some uh, snacks from Sainsbury's uh, so I didn't need to cook them. I bought some samosas and a, a sort of egg roll. Um, but I have got some. Uh, I got some noodles I can uh, cook in the morning. Uh, I've got some bananas as well I can eat in the night. Um, and I've got plenty of drink to drink. Obviously, there's no water sources up here. Uh, I can actually hear the thuds of Salisbury Plain. They're obviously, uh, practicing. There's quite a lot of. Um, explosions going on don't know if you can hear that sounds like thunder but it's it's thuds from the um i don't know i guess the tanks firing at targets or whatever they're you know whatever they're using 
It's actually quite relaxing listening to it. Guys, you might know I love coffee. I got this from uh, Sainsbury's today. Um, it is coffee with almond dairy free. Now, I can have dairy products. It's no problem for me, but I thought I'd try this. It was a reduced 50p. Um, I'm almost finished it off. I was going to save some for the morning, but I have actually got some coffee bags with me as well, luckily. But actually, it's quite nice, but I probably... Like, it's a bit pricey at £2.50, but um, you've probably got like two servings in this, I would say, from like what you normally get when those little like uh, cans of coffee you get from the supermarkets. If you've never wild camped before, um, you'll probably want to know if it's um, safe wild camping for men or women. Um, now, in all the years I've been wild camping, which is you know, I've camped wild for 30 plus years. Um, I've only had a few situations, but none of them turned out bad. Obviously, I'm still alive. Um, there was one time I was basically it was a bit of a party. I was a bit drunk and um, I was in my tent, and then some guy said he had a gun. Um, I come out because because I, I was drunk. I come out of the tent. I was being a bit larry, and I think the guy actually I, I freaked the guy out and he left, even though he said he had a gun. Um, I scared him off. Um, <laughs> I think if I wasn't drunk, I'd probably been a bit more scared. But um, yeah, the guy just walked off really quickly. So that was a little bit odd. I couldn't see who it was because um, he had a head torch. And it was shining in my face, so I, couldn't, I had no idea who it was. Um, but um, yeah, so that was a bit weird. Uh, nothing bad happened, though, but it uh, possibly could have. I, you know, I think he was making it up, to be honest. It was just a bit of, a, bit of a weirdo. Um, and then um, I was doing, I think it might have been the Chilton Way, and I was wild camping in some bushes, and a, a farmer, a landowner, was um, hunting rabbits, and I could hear the gun going off, the punch, it was like a punch, 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 and I could hear it getting close to the bullets to my tent, and I was saying, mate, mate, there's someone in here, and I like, quickly got tried to get my shoes on, get out of the tent and tell him there was someone in there, and of course, you're not. You're supposed to shoot with clear line of sight. They're not allowed to shoot into the bushes like that. They need clear line of sight, as far as I'm aware. Anyway, he shit him right up, and he offered me some rabbits to eat. I said no because I didn't really have anything to cook them with. And um, but he was very, you know, it's his land. I was camping on it, and obviously he thought I almost shot me, which he really shouldn't have been shooting into the bushes without seeing what he was shooting at. Um, so yeah, when people are hunting, even though they're not supposed to shoot without clear line of sight, doesn't mean to say they're not going to. So that can be a little bit risky sometimes when it's hunting season. Um, I've often camped out where you can hear the guns are quite close, and I'm always very aware aware of that if I have to get out of the tent quickly. But in all those years, I've never, never been. That was the closest I got to with the, that farmer situation and when he was shooting rabbits. Um, I was camping up on the Ridgeway one night and I heard a car, because cars can go up parts of the Ridgeway, I heard a car come out, stop outside a tent or it was actually a Jeep. Anyway, I heard these footsteps getting closer to my tent and then a zip on my, the zip started undoing on my tent. I quickly got out of my tent and I saw a woman was actually running, like going back to the car quickly. So what the hell was she coming up to my tent for, trying to unzip it? I don't know. Maybe it was like um, some weird sort of like dogging area on the ridgeway. It was like places where cars could park and there had been some fire pits. But it, what a weird thing to do. If you see it, if you see someone camping in a tent, like why would you go over to it and start unzipping the tent? Like, and, But as soon as I moved and got up, like I made a noise and I started to move like I could hear they she run back to the car which is why we like it was it was some woman and some bloke so that was really weird and obviously after that I quickly put my tent down and left I don't want to hang around there man that was a bit fucking weird um uh what other situations um 
there was um oh let me think oh yeah the, like um another ridgeway story camping up on the ridgeway um it's quite a busy national trail and i was camping at wayland smithy and i've heard very strange noises at night um while camping next to wayland smithy on the forest that's on the other side like car slamming doors at 3 a.m. in the morning weird sounds like um so I, I'd camp there again but I wouldn't camp there on my own that's one place I wouldn't camp on my own or that place where that weird thing would someone come up to my tent and decide on zipping my tent I wouldn't camp there again um I actually think about it this is not why I'm in my tent but when I was um I don't know how many years ago it's a long time ago I was walking um, in Exmoor, um, I don't know if I was in the trailer, I just went to Exmoor, I'm sure it was Exmoor, not Dartmoor, and um, I saw this massive black creature, and its eyes lit up when I had my head torch in its eyes, and it just went running like straight across in front of me, oh my god, seriously, like, um, I tried actually getting the video camera out, um, had my pen knife ready, not like good that would have done, but whatever it was, it was probably more scared of me than I was scared of it. Well, I was scared, but um, obviously I had my big backpack, so I couldn't um, exactly, I was quite frozen actually. Um, yeah, then I turned my light right up after that, like um, that was very freaky. Um, I don't have no idea what that was, but it, it was basically like um, it must have been five foot tall, like uh, this black sort of beast standing on two legs with like bright, bright, bright eyes. But I'm, I'm talking about like thirty odd years of outdoor sort of like experience, and um, I would say that. Yeah, it's safe. I'd say it's safe for a man and a woman because I've never, never one's actually ever come into my tent while I've been camping. Although that one time I told you just about where someone was unzipping the tent, but that was actually a woman. That wasn't a man. That was a woman, which is, you know, you'd expect it, you know, stereotype it for it to be a man doing it. But yeah, it was a woman come up sneaking up onto my tent, which is really weird. I would say it's safe for a woman and a man. Um, in Britain anyway um, perfectly safe for a woman perfectly safe for a man obviously there's always going to be that small percentage that you are going to come across something that's not great but as I said like I've like I'm still here so like don't don't let um, don't be put off um, while camping like whether you're a woman or a man I think it's um it's really it's like really invigorating while camping it's good for your mental health um I would say um if you are worried like uh, do you know what I never even like I've got a pen knife but that's tucked away in my bag I'm not even I'm not there thinking shit something's gonna happen so I've done this so many times, and I know that the chances of something happening is so low. Um, I'm, you know, you're way more likely to be run over and by a car. Um, it's perfectly safe. I'd like, um, like uh, obviously, when you're wild camping, you want to try and camp out the way where houses can't see you, uh, which is respect being respectful anyway. And um, maybe not camping areas that are really, really busy. This area I said is busy in the day, but this time of year, I can't see many people coming up here at night. And even so, even if it was, I'm I'm not that worried about it to be honest. I don't like think what's that noise? What's that noise outside? It's like I'm talking now, see? So I'm not bothered. Um, I really do recommend it. So yeah, if you're a woman or a man, it's not dangerous. It's perfectly safe to wall camp. Guys, do you have any weird wild camping experiences? If you do, let me know in the comments.